Guys, you know how much I love proxying and reverse proxy and load balancers and load distributors and those software. I've been, I made a lot of videos. I made a video about Envoy, uh, Nginx, HA proxy and traffic, a man in the middle proxy. I love proxies. I love load balancers. I really think they are game changers and I think they are being used, especially in the microservices architecture, in a very smart and intelligent way. This blew me away. You can use IP tables to perform kernel native load balancing at that net filter packet level. It, it doesn't get any faster than that. Let's learn how to do that. This was part two of the IP tables saga. Uh, I'm going to reference part one right here if you're interested. How about we jump into this video and learn how to do a native load balancing with IP table with no software. Nil, N-I-L, null software, no software at all. Use beautiful Linux distro, your favorite, and we're going to jump into it. I'm going to use Raspberry Pi here. And uh, we're gonna do a load balancing. So this video is gonna be uh, spread into two parts. The first part, we're gonna use a round robin load balancer. We're gonna do a very nice fancy trick to do that. And the second one, we're gonna do a random load balancing uses. So use your YouTube chapter to jump into the interesting part of the video. How about we jump into it? All right, what do we have here? We have four beautiful services, 254 dot 10 one, 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 one. this is site one running on port one 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 on 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 ip address 10 okay keep it keep in mind this is 10 okay my pi is ip address 47 just to so so you know so there is another site two 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 that's the green site site two three 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 is the blue site so three websites three services three APIs does not matter. We're load balancing here. What we want to do here is we're going to make my pi, which is running the hosting this IP address on port 80. When you go to port 80, I want to flip through these three with a uh, with a TCP layer four. It's like more like a three, layer three if you think about it. Layer three, layer four load balancing. We're not gonna do a layer layer seven load balancing with the kernel. You, you can't do that. You can, but it's just so complicated. You need actual software for that. But for beautiful packet level layer four load balancing, we're gonna do that. When you do that, you're gonna visit site one, site two, and so three. We're gonna do uh, some sort of a balancing between them, load balancing. I guess this is called load distribution. Does because layer four is dumb. It doesn't know how to balance, right? <laughs> it doesn't know if this target server is loaded, overloaded. I mean, it has very naive understanding of what loading mean, right? It's like, is, is it the number of connections? That doesn't mean anything, right? I can have thousand connections, but they are all idle, right? But, uh, and I can have two connections with and and uh, and and the and the processing is being hammered on the back end right so how about we jump into it and do load balancing we're going to do let's go to the pi and do uh, sudo ip tables and let's just flush everything clean uh, i get i get to flush the nat table i guess specify nat flush the nat we are clean as a whistle boom no chains, nothing. What we're going to do here is we will add a bunch of pre-routing rules. And we talked about that pre-routing rule and post-routing rule because we're not introducing a new chains here. We're going to use the same chains that we explained in the first video. So I, I encourage you to first watch the first video if you didn't. There's like a fancy graphics, graphics and stuff. Remember, this is the pie. This is, this is IP address 47, right? And we're going to load balance everything to to ip address 10 right you might say hussein you're just all of them running on the same ip address yeah i'm just testing here of course but you can you can just have them on separate machines or services that's fine right it's just uh, i don't have enough machines here okay i probably should use like a service like a Linode digital uh, foundry or digital ocean huh maybe in the future maybe in the future here's how we do around robin load balancing we have three services right 
So we're going to do essentially three rules. And we're going to do a trick here. With the matching that we're going to happen on the IP tables, we're going to use a, 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 a matching module called statistics that matches every number of packets, right? Hey, every three packets match the rule. Every two packets match the rule, right? So based on that, you can simulate some sort of a route drop. And it's going to be clear in a minute. So let's do IP, sudo IP tables. And then we're going to do, obviously, the NAT table. We learned all that stuff. We have done this before, right? And uh, what is your, uh, we're going to append to the pre-routing chain. All right, we're adding to the chain that is called pre-routing. And we're filtering on the pro, uh, uh, on the destination, if your destination is MO, which is the PI, and the protocol is TCP, right? And you're trying to go to port 80, and all of these are called matches. We talked about this in the previous part, right? Uh, in the first episode. These are called matches. These are called built-in matches. This is, you can essentially load extra module that perform custom matches. And this match is called statistic. Statis, statistics. Did I spell that right, right? Statistic. One X, no X, right? And here's the thing. This module, this matching module comes with uh, a parameter that's called mode and the modes are here called nth and random so we're gonna first explain the nth which is the every x number of packets evaluate this rule that you're seeing right here not every time like 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 always only evaluated every uh, x number of time so we're gonna do that that naturally when you say nth that means this comes in with uh, a parameter called every and we're gonna add every three packets. So what we're gonna do here is this rule is gonna be evaluated every three packets, right? And the second rule is gonna be evaluated every second. And the third rule is gonna be evaluated all the time. And because we know how pre-routing chains work, the first chain that uh, satisfy the packet immediately quits. It's like a immediately like it's a, like a return. Think of it like this if you in programming, right? All right, every three. I want to evaluate on packet zero, okay? That's essentially the send packet because we're, we're doing everything on, on TCP here, right? And uh, okay, if you know, I suggest you, if you're new to this stuff, learn about the TCP hand trick. I talked about it right here if you want to learn more about that. So every packet zero, all right? Looks that good, looks good. Now, what do I, what do, I do? I want to jump into the target that is called DNAT. I talked about that. Again, nothing fancy here. We're just playing with the matches here. And then... I want you to go to two destination, that is 192.168.254.10, and which port? Let's pick one. So every three packets, so every one, two, three, we get, we're going to evaluate this, and we're going to go to this rule, essentially uh, the, the first IP address, which is this running on, on the red side. This is the site one, right? And that's it. Just add one rule. Do exactly the same thing, change that to side two, and we're going to change this to every two packets. Got it? And then finally, the last one is, we don't even need this stinking module anymore. You can remove it. I want to always evaluate that. Always evaluate this rule. But you might say, Hussein, if you're always evaluating this rule, then how do, how do these rules will be evaluated in this case? Right? No. Remember, the order in IP tables matter. This is rule three. And as a result, if the first rule didn't get evaluated and the second rule didn't get evaluated because, I don't know, it was the first packet, then the third rule will be evaluated, which is this. And we forgot to change uh, this. It should be 3333. Right? So 111, 222, and then 3333. And enter. And let's check our table. Pseudo IP tables dash dash table not dash dash list and here's a go we have the table let's just show the line number law i think it's called line numbers right there you go 
This way you show the rule numbers here. So rule number one is this. In th every three packets, so a sin comes, a sin packet comes, and like a new connection, it will try to evaluate in this. Nope, we're not evaluating it uh, because it's the first packet. So, and so we're going to skip this rule. Try to evaluate it here. Nope, it's the first packet, so we're going to skip it. So we're going to evaluate it here. And then the second sin, come in here, try to evaluate it here. No, this is the third packet, so we're in the second. Skip it, and then we're going to evaluate this in this step, because that's the second time. And the third time, we're going to evaluate this, and then boom, boom, boom. B-box. That's it. That is it. And guys, you showed me how to show the actual IP enders here. That's cute. Numeric. Ha ha ha. That's better. I like this better. <laughs> Thank you for all the comments. I love I love you guys. You guys uh, are giving me a lot of insights into these things. Right? So yeah. All right. Is this enough? We know how uh, destination NAT works. This is absolutely going to fail. <laughs> right? Because there is no source NAT. The moment we start forwarding this stuff, it's going to fail. And you might say, I say, I don't believe you. Well, well, you don't believe me. Then see, if I do now curl HTTP 192.168.254.47 on port 80, I guess this is the default. We don't have to. We're going to get this. We're going to keep trying to establish a connection without any chance because the packet, the return, the return source NAT is wrong. We're returning to the wrong computer, essentially. So how do we fix it? We fix it. We talked about that. Pseudo IP tables. We're going to do a source NAT for all the three. And the beauty of this is a source NAT, you do this once, the post routing, as you leave the packet, right? Let's do, uh, as you leave the packet from the kernel, go and uh, change the source so it's me, the pi. The pi should receive all these packets back, not the original client, right? The, the original client might, you might get away with that without it if you have gateways uh, configured correctly and if the client is outside your network because the gateway will take care of this stuff, right? Pseudo IP tables, what do we do? I'm going to append to the, oh, forgot the table. Natto, natto desu Appendo post routing. We're going to append to the post routing. What are we going to append? Uh, if the protocol, protocol, protocol is, what the hell am I doing? If the protocol is, uh, protocol is TCP, right? And, and you're going, you are going, again, you're the Pi, and there's a packet leaving from you to that machine, the 10 machine, the IP machine 10, right? If your destination is 192.168.254.10, if you're going there and, and, and the destination port is, again, we have three services. You can go to port 1111, 222, or 33. We need three rules for all that stuff, right? And you need a rule for each IP address that you're going to, right? In my case, it's just one, but you get the idea, right? Nice it is. We want to jump to the target that is called isnet, and then I want to set my source to be moi. Hey, packet that you that leaving me, please. If you satisfy this condition, I know that I natted you. So please, you should come back to me. You should not go anywhere else because you're gonna be lost, and it's a very dangerous word out there my friend don't go out there uh, naked like this and then boom just like that we have a error what do we need to do next we need another one did you call it for two 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 and another one for three 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 Ooh, beautiful with a p not beautiful with a p beautiful that's a new word i just invented beautiful that means it's it's very very beautiful got it all right awesome so now hussein uh, you're bullshitting me that will this work of course it will duh so side two side three side one um 
I know some of you guys are this guy is an idiot. <laughs> I get excited with this stuff, guys. I love this stuff. I genuinely love this stuff. So side one, side two, side three. Right? So we're round robining. Now, generally, Hussein, uh, show me how this works on a browser. Let's go to the browser. And then boof. boof. I like the brave of me automatically refreshed. Refresh. Hussein, what are you talking about? This is not round robining. Well, duh, if you know how a browser works, you know that is by design. You know that Brave is using Chromium. And you know Chromium uh, reuses the TCP connection. So that means this thing... God dang, I'm trying to move to... to I tried to move to, Chrome, uh, to Brave from Chrome and I'm now regretting it. So I don't know where, where stuff is. This is the first time I use it, so excuse me, guys. So uh, how do I add the connection ID? Is there, thank you. There's your. So the connection ID is 28532. There is a brand new TCP connection that has been established, right? And we hit, using that, there is a send that went to my Raspberry Pi, which was, ter Ugh, I can't talk, which was forwarded to my backend server, the IP address 10, which then got locked in. Connection tracking, man. And in future, packets using the same source and destination port will always go through that path. You cannot just change it and throw it into another uh, 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 machine because you're gonna you're gonna fail. You're gonna get the TCP reset. That's how, that's how the internet works. It has to go back to the same box. NAT works this way, right? Because TCP is stateful. All right. So now, every time I refresh, look at that. Now I got a new TCP connection, 73, so we flip to the blue side. If I refresh again, oh, I got another one, 75, right? If I refresh again, I use the same connection, 75, so then I stay in red. I refresh again, 75, I stay in red. I refresh again, 75. 70. It's all heuristics. God knows if, if Brave decides to move me to another uh, connection. Even in a new tab, you can, you can tell that Chromium reuses connection across tabs with this, right? Boom. Refresh show this guy. 56. All right. Now, uh, okay. I lied. It doesn't use it. So 56. See, <laughs> It does use it. It does use it. I take that back. See? All right. This is round, round, robin, round, round, robin, all this guy. Okay. Round robin. All right, guys. Now... Let's show how to do random. The random one is, is, is interesting, right? Because randomly, 33% of the time, I wanted to go to this server. 33% of the time, I wanted to go to this server. Or 70% of the time, I wanted to go to this server. So how do you do this, right? First of all, if you do uh, sudo ip table dash dash uh, table nat list. Now, we're going to remove this stuff because we're going to add an, a three new rules right so we need to delete that stuff so here's a new command that uh, we're gonna learn again guys we always learn stuff when we need it don't memorize commands uh of ip tables because you're gonna get lost right when you try to do something learn it i am doing exactly the same thing i learned this command literally today okay so how do i delete a rule well, you can delete a rule with number, but there are three. So I want to delete all the rules in this chain. How to do that? Very simple. You do, I want to delete all the rules in the pre-routing because the pre-routing will change from round rover to random. How to do that? Very simple, this guy. You do sudo ip tables, dash dash table net. And then I want to flush, but don't flush everything. Only flush the pre-routing. If you don't add this, right it will flush the whole table i don't want to flush the whole table i need my post routing snat this snat does not change regardless right boom sudo ip tables dash dash nato this listo and then here, look at this look at this beautiful so no more pre-routing we have all the beautiful post routing beautiful post routing so good next we need to add the rules Let's see if we can cheat. <laughs> if I go, go all the ba way back to this. Because I don't want to rewrite the whole thing again. All right. Here, yep. There you go. 
So here's what I'm gonna do, guys. Using that, oh, 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 there you go. So it's the same rule exactly. We're even gonna use the same module, the matching statistics here. I'll use them like that. But we're not gonna use this garbage. We change the mood to random from nth, and we're gonna add a new parameter called prob probability. Is that how you spell probability? Probability. Prob probability. My friend Prob got some ability. That's how I memorize things. It's just like the Michael Scott in the office. <laughs> probability. So for the probability, 33% of the time, right? I want you to evaluate this rule. And so, so it's all random, right? 33% of the time evaluated. That means 66% of the time don't evaluate it. So 66% of the time, this rule will be skipped and go to the next one. And now that's when you have to balance the 66% between the two rules, right? That means you have to split the second 60% to 50%, which gives it 33%. If you want exact load balancing, right? All right, I think, that, I think that's it. That's it, literally. I don't think you need to change anything. The, uh, we're changing, this is port three. Let, let's just change this to uh, port one, uh, service one. Boom, 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 boom. Dosso desu Now, for service two, now it's gonna sound odd. If I say 33%, that's wrong. Uh, not wrong, you can do it, but it's gonna be 33% of the 60%. Does that make sense? Because remember, this rule will be evaluated first because this is ordered, right? And 66% of the time, they were not going to evaluate it. So this rule is going to get 66% of the remaining packets. So you want, you if you said 33%, that means 33% of the 66% evaluate that. So, so you're going to get essentially the third. I don't know. So you don't want that. You want 50% of the time these 66%, that exactly give you 33%, right? So, and the, and the final rule will get the remaining, which is 33%, giving you a full 100%, right? That's, that's how you do exactly if you, if you want to, essentially, right? And that's it, boom. And the last one, just like the, uh, just like the, uh, what is it called? Round robin, we don't need any of this garbage. We don't need any evaluation, just... Leave it all, all naked, no matches. Because at the end of the day, this is where like, this is the chicken, chicken? <laughs> this is the kitchen sink, not the chicken sink. Uh, it's a kitchen sink, okay. This is the kitchen sink, at the end of the day, ugh, everything goes there. Boom. Ganzo, danzo deska. Now, let's test. Boof, 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 yeah, random, random, three, one, boom. One, 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 two, three, one. You get the idea, I guess. <laughs> That's the random, guys. I'm gonna reference all these commands in the uh, comment section below for you guys uh, uh, to explore and play with. But if you now refresh this thing, now this is supposed to be random. Obviously, uh, since we are a, a, a TCP kernel, load balancing i hate the word load balancing because it's not a really load balancer right you need application layer knowledge knowledge ty lopez you need knowledge in layer seven to actually do smart load balancing this is dumb load balancing right this is just at a packet level you just okay go to this connection this is connection level uh load balancing right it's not smart by any chance. That's why people prefer layer seven. You need to terminate everything, look at the content, measure. You get you need health checks. So actual proxy and load balancing are are critical and difficult to build. Right? So uh what's um what's Cloudflare's let, let me let me get it. Cloudflare uh kernel load balancer TCP something like that. Yeah, there you go. It's called Unimog. Unimog, I made a video about this. Unimog, kernel, Cloudflare Edge Load Balancer. This is actually a kernel. 
it's a layer four load balancer and it's a kernel load balancer. It, it plays at the packet level. And boy, they made it so, they made it a kernel, so it's just so fast. And it's so uh, powerful because they have access to this networking stack and, and they, dude, I encourage you to read this article and I encourage you to watch my video on it. Man, this is this this makes Nginx looks like the tutorial boss, and and this is essentially the final boss. If you, if that if that uh, the gamer analogy makes sense here, but this is a badass. This is a badass load balancer. All right, guys, that is it for me today. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna see you on the next one. Hit that subscribe button and uh, and hit that like button uh, to support the channel and uh, check out my. Uh, uh, courses on Udemy to support uh, the channel. They will really help support the channel. And uh, there, are, I took, uh, I have a course on, on introduction to database engineering. So that that uh, that's really really popular on Udemy. So check it out. And uh, I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, Udemy.